In this video, let's look at the relationship between the linear and the angular speed. So this is a, a direct sequel to the previous video. We've defined or we've given a formula for linear speed and for angular speed. And it's probably pretty intuitive to us that if we have two different ways of talking about speed, those ought to be related somehow. The relationship is this. Here V will be our can't see it up there. Here V will be our linear speed. And we claim that V is R times omega, where omega is our angular speed. And this R is the radius of the circle. And just like when we looked at um, arc lengths, we need to be in radians here. We must measure angles in radians for this relationship to hold. And now let's do an example, a slightly intricate example. Let's say a bicycle. What am I doing? I I know how to spell bicycle, I promise. Let's say a bicycle has wheels 28 inches in diameter, and the wheels are rotating 180 rotations per minute. Now, the wheel's linear speed on a bicycle is also the speed that the bike moves down the road. So let's find that linear speed. Let's find how quickly the bicycle is moving. And there are a few different ways to do this problem. This problem is example 11 from the textbook. I think I'm going to approach this problem differently from how the textbook approaches it. Although, of course, we'll wind up with the same answer. So we've got a formula. We've got several formulas for linear speed. We have this formula. And then we have this formula, but presumably this is the formula we need because this formula is relating linear speed to angular speed. And rotations per minute is telling you something about angular speed. It's telling you that every minute we go through 180 full rotations of the circle. So if we're going to use this formula for the linear speed, we need the radius of the wheel and we need the angular speed. And hopefully the radius of the wheel is no big mystery. The radius is half the diameter. But what about the angular speed? 
Now, I'm going to approach this very quickly and very literally. As I say, this isn't quite how the textbook handles it. But I'm going to say, well, if we have an angle of rotation and we have a time, that gives us the angular speed. What are we told? We're told that we rotate 180 times per minute. And I'm going to say, well, all right. One rotation is two pi radians. So one hundred eighty rotations is one hundred eighty times two pi radians, which I'll calculate plugging off camera. We find that when the wheel has rotated 180 times, it's made a rotation of 1130.97 radians. So we are Now going to plug this into Omega. Radians are unitless. So I've been writing them down to avoid confusion. Two pi what? Two pi radians. Uh, um, 1130.97 what? Well, that many radians. But properly speaking, you don't need to write that down. And that's actually going to be relevant because you'll see that this omega has a unit in the denominator, but not in the numerator. Well, now that we have R and this 14 has a unit as well, this is 14 inches. Now that we have an R and we have an omega, we can find the linear speed. We just multiply them together. And the reason I mentioned that about the units is you see when we do this multiplication, we're going to get a unit of speed. We're going to get inches per minute. Or as if we'd had radians up here, as if it were a unit, we'd have had inches times radians per minute, which would not be correct. I mean, in the sense that inches times radians per minute isn't a unit of a speed. So, our bicycle is moving down the road at a speed of 15,833.58 inches per minute. Now, this problem doesn't tell you what unit your answer should be in, but I hope we can agree that inches per minute might not be super helpful.
Oh, so let's convert it into something more familiar. Ordinarily, when we're talking about a vehicle's road speed, we're going to want to talk about miles per hour. We could, I suppose, just go to Google and look up how many um, inches there are in a mile, but we'll do it the slow way. We'll convert from inches to feet. Then we'll convert from feet to miles. Then we'll convert from minutes to hours. And when the dust clears and we do all of that multiplication, we find that the bike is moving at about 15 miles per hour, 14.99 something. Again, I want to emphasize that we were, in order to do all of this, for all of this to work, um, we needed our angle to be measured in radians. We said two pi radians instead of 360 degrees. It would, I mean, this might seem weird, but it would actually be a huge problem if we had degrees here. And I sort of touched on what the problem is that if you had degrees here, radians are unitless, but degrees aren't. If we had degrees, we'd need degrees up here, and then we'd have degrees here. And we'd wind up with nonsense. Inches times degrees over minute, is not a measure of speed. So radians being unitless is really useful. And it's one of the things that makes these formulas work so nicely.